Hey guys, it's Matthew Zachary, and I want to tell you about the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, or the NCCN. The NCCN creates the treatment guidelines for doctors that help cancer patients lead better lives. But I want you to know that the NCCN also has guidelines for you. The patient guidelines were funded by the NCCN Foundation and were created just for people with cancer and their caregivers. They're free, they're easy to understand, and they're available right now for you, the patient and the caregiver. So go check them out at nccn.org slash empower. That's nccn.org slash empower. everyone, I'm Joey Brenneman from Offscript Health, and we are excited to introduce you to Offscript Health's latest podcast series called Before We Die, the world's best podcast about the med tech industry. All right, now you might be asking, what the heck is med tech and why do I need to know about it? Well, every day, advances in technology are providing new, less invasive options in healthcare. Many of them are born out of the idea that there has to be a better way. On this show, we will be talking with the rock star innovators and inventors of the med tech industry who felt the same way, which inspired them to create a new device or challenge a way that a procedure was done. And most people don't even know who they are. So our job is to put them in the spotlight. Joining me twice a week are the three creators of the show and the Before We Die panel of experts, Sandra Miller, John McMahon, and Craig Allman. All right, so since this is a new and very unusual show for the Offscript Network, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourselves and what you do? I'm Sandra Miller. I'm a startup advisor and educator, and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs bring innovations to market to improve patient care. Great. And John McMahon? I'm a biodesigner committed to really trying to change healthcare by making simpler, safer solutions at better prices, and to get it out to patients, patients, and more patients. Excellent. And Craig Allman. I'm a serial entrepreneur, a former keeper of the magic. That was actually my business card. And also former head lifeguard at the Great Salt Lake. And I'm proud to say that not a single drowning occurred while I was head lifeguard. So, Craig, I have to ask, former keeper of the magic, who's keeping the magic now if you are no longer (laughs) keeping the magic? If you've read the papers in the last five years or so, the magic's gone. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, we're going to bring it back. I'm I'm, I'm determined. (laughs) So among all of your descriptions and your introductions are words like innovator and startup and bio designer. And these are words for me that are context clues about this industry, this med tech industry that we're going to be talking about on this show. And you guys are the insiders, but me, I am very new to this world and all of its vocabulary. I mean, I know about big things like MRIs and little things like Fitbits and things in between, like some of the wearables for diabetes. But that's kind of my narrow knowledge right now. So what can you tell me to get me excited about what we're going to be talking about here? What is med tech? So, uh, Joey, that's a great question, right? Everybody is walking around with arguably a supercomputer in their pocket. When you look at healthcare, you see such a gap in innovation and technology that people have to take care of themselves. And one thing that, that's really nice about MedTech is it's normally a champion. Someone or a small group of people go after a problem. And how they do it, how they pull it off is, is a big opportunity for us to share with the off-script audience. That's really exciting. And Sandy, I'm assuming that since these problems are being solved with new devices and as this innovation is happening, these young companies need someone like you to help guide them along their way. Am I right in that? Yes, absolutely. So the medical device industry is very different from pharma. It's much more of a process where you're iterating alongside the physicians. The physician input as you're developing that medical device is really critical. The majority of the med tech industry are actually startups that are really trying to develop the right medical devices to solve a particular problem. Just like with any startup company, you need a lot of help 
And in the context of doing startups in the medical device space, you know, you're also doing that in a highly regulated industry. Right. If it's truly novel, you also have to get it approved through the FDA. You have to get the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services to come up with new codes so that you can actually get reimbursed for it and the hospitals can re- get reimbursed for it if that's appropriate. All right. There's a lot to navigate and it's quite a twisted trail. And then on the other side, you have like patients who are <laughs> oh, yeah, those people. This stuff. <laughs> the COVID-19 pandemic showed us how a microscopic virus could upend our lives and how unprepared our society was for it. There's so much more out there that we need to understand, which is why I recommend subscribing to Crooked Media's America Dissected, hosted by former Detroit Health Commissioner, Dr. Abdul El Sayed. Each week, Dr. El Sayed sits down with doctors, scientists, culture makers, and policy leaders to ask questions like, how could new genetic discoveries change our relationship with our own genes? How could addiction to social media change our brains? Or how even climate change could make the next major pandemic more likely? To hear discussions on these topics and more, check out America Dissected from Crooked Media. New episodes drop every Tuesday. Listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Startup needs different things, different expertise almost every day because they're solving, you know, one problem today. They need this expert. They're solving another problem tomorrow and they need this other kind of expert. And so there's a lot that needs to happen. And of course, they need help with funding, uh, different sources of funding at different stages as their company matures. Lots of hoops to jump through, I would imagine. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and Joey, you brought up the question about biodesigner, right? Mm-hmm. So I wear that pretty proudly. It's a really peculiar field. You get to go into uh, needs finding where you follow doctors or nurses or clinicians Mm -hmm. around and you get to ask them why they do things. Yeah. How you get to that is somebody outside of the clinician and outside of the nurse gets invited to the dance and gets Mm -hmm. to watch what's going on. And you, you say, why do you do that? And then you get to think in your head, there's got to be a better way. So you're constantly, constantly looking for the improvement or some new, less invasive way. Yeah. And there's a lot of the doctors, clinicians and nurses that will say, we need a better way. And they may give you an idea like, I wish we had something that did this, Mm. but they can't make it happen. Right. And so the biodesigner then, you know, stays afloat either with funding or however they do with a grant. And they show up six months later and say, hey, remember what we talked about? Take a look at this. That's really awesome. It must be very rewarding, I would think. Or like we're going to hear rewarding and sometimes not so rewarding. The big filter on all this is that, okay, you can come up with a really clever idea. You can turn it into a physical product. You can do a clinical trial and show, oh, look, this is actually much better than the standard of care. Mm -hmm. And all of that's great and necessary, but it's not sufficient because it still has to be a business. Right. And potential investors still have to see an easy way to make a lot of money or you're not going to get funded and it's not going to happen. You've got just proving the efficacy, then you've got the whole government Michigas, and then you've got the whole business Michigas, which is actually maybe the hardest. Right. So there are a lot of layers, which is why I think this podcast came into being, because what I'm hearing is that innovation is happening and all these great ideas are out there solving health problems and procedures in new ways, but it can get overwhelmed and suppressed by the amount of steps that it takes to get this new technology to actual patients. Thus, the title of this show was born because we want these products to get to the patients who need them before we die. 
So download and subscribe to Before We Die, wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get full episodes every Tuesday and on Thursdays. You'll get our Lab Before Slab mini episodes where Sandy, John, and Craig geek out about the latest happenings in the med tech world. Who would have thought that medical innovation could be so riveting? 